Welcome to a lesson on linear second order non-homogeneous differential equations. The objectives are to define a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation and then prove the form of the general solution to this type of differential equation. A linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation fits this form here. Notice how on the right side of the equation we don't have zero, we have a function of x, in this case g of x. Also notice that the coefficient of y double prime is equal to one, but if it wasn't, we could always divide through by that function to have a coefficient of one. So we'll call this non-homogeneous differential equation equation one, and then taking a look at equation two, notice how the right side of the equation is equal to zero, and the left side fits the same form. Because the right side is equal to zero, this is a homogeneous differential equation, and we call equation two, the homogeneous differential equation corresponding to equation one, or the associated homogeneous differential equation to equation one. Now let's take a look at a theorem. We're going to use capital letters for the solutions to the non-homogeneous differential equation, and we'll use lowercase letters for the solutions to the homogeneous differential equation. So if big Y sub one and big Y sub two are two solutions to the non-homogeneous differential equation, then the difference of these two solutions would be a solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. And this should make sense because if big Y sub one is a solution to this differential equation, big Y sub one would make the left side of the equation equal to G of X, and so would big Y sub two. And therefore, if we subtracted these two, it would be G of X minus G of X, which would give us zero, making this difference a solution to the homogeneous differential equation. And so from this, if little y sub one and little y sub two are a fundamental set of solutions to the homogeneous differential equation, which we know has a general solution in the form here on the right, then the difference of big y sub one and big y sub two must be equal to the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation. But let's go ahead and prove that this difference is a solution to the homogeneous differential equation in this form here. So to do this, we're going to substitute this difference here for y, which means instead of y double prime, we'll have y double prime of the difference. Instead of y prime, we'll have y prime of the difference. And instead of y, we'll have this difference. So for the next step, we're going to clear the parentheses. So we would have big Y sub one double prime minus big Y sub two double prime, and then plus P of X times big Y sub one prime minus P of X times big Y sub two prime. And then we'd have plus Q of X big Y sub one minus Q of X big Y sub two equals zero. And now we'll group the sub one terms and sub two terms. So notice how here's a sub one term as well as here and here. Notice how they're all positive. Then the sub two terms are here, here, and here. Notice they're all subtraction. So we'll group the Y sub one terms first. So we'll have Y sub one double prime plus P of X times Y sub one prime, and then plus Q of X, Y sub one. And because the remaining terms are subtraction, let's go ahead and subtract the quantity, which means all the terms inside the parentheses will now be positive. So instead of minus Y sub two double prime, we'll have Y sub two double prime. Instead of minus P of X, Y sub two prime, we'll have plus P of X, Y sub two prime, and then finally plus Q of X, Y sub two. But now since big Y sub one and big Y sub two are solutions to equation one, the non-homogeneous differential equation, which we see here, both expressions must be equal to G of X. Again, because y sub one is a solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation equal to g of x, this quantity here is equal to g of x, 
And this quantity here is also equal to g of x, which is obviously going to be equal to zero. And therefore, big Y sub one minus big Y sub two are solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, or this equation here. And now we can use this fact to help us find the general solution to a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So now that we know this equation is true, we can use this fact to form the general solution to a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation, or equation one. If y of x is the general solution to equation one, and big Y sub p is any particular solution to equation one, we can use this fact here and conclude that the difference of these two functions must be equal to the general solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. Again, where y sub one and y sub two are a fundamental set of solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. And therefore, by solving this equation here for y of x, we have the general solution to equation one the non-homogeneous differential equation. The, the general solution would be in this form here, where these first two terms are the general solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, and big Y sub P is any particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. So let's go ahead and summarize our findings. Now we know that in order to find the general solution to a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation, the general solution will be in this form here, which means we'll have to find one particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. Which leads us to our next lesson. In the next lesson, we'll discuss the following methods for finding particular solutions to non-homogeneous differential equations. We'll discuss the method of undetermined coefficients, as well as the method of variation of parameters. I hope you found this explanation helpful.